Hey, everyone. I'm Jill Riley from The Current's Morning Show, and I'm really glad to be looking at you right now, members of Minnesota Public Radio. It's time for another taping of a virtual session, and I'm really glad that you get the opportunity to kind of creep in and, <laughs> and watch how these things go. Uh, so I just want to take a moment to say thank you so much for your support of public radio, of Minnesota public radio, and keeping the music rolling on the current, you know, especially, <sighs> it's a new year. But that doesn't mean that we're out of the water. Uh, we are still in a pandemic. Um, it's been really a crazy week in the news, but I think that's why music is so important right now, if we can just get a respite from everything going on in the news cycle. And I really do believe that. So thank you for supporting the music that you love on The Current. We really couldn't do this without you. And as we've been kind of trying to navigate how we can connect you with your favorite artists and how we can still bring you live performances, we've turned to the virtual world just like everybody else has. So thanks for making it happen. Um, I'm really excited to catch up with today's guest for The Current's virtual session. And uh, it's, it's been a while since we've talked to him here on The Current, so very excited to introduce Mr. Mike Doty. Hello. Hi, Mike Doty, how are you doing? Uh... It's a loaded question. It's a big question. <laughs> <laughs> I had a nice breakfast. Yeah, that's about all There's we can say right now. Coffee. Yeah, had a good, decent cup of coffee. Uh, that's the good part. And I'm with you. And I'm with you. That's that's also good. I'm I'm doing good because I'm with you. All right. Well, thank you for that. Yeah, take we just take pleasure in the little things like our cup of coffee and connecting with people when, you know, we're just trying to find a way to stay connected during this time. And like I said, the news cycle and the pandemic and all of it. But I know that you have kept pretty busy during this past year, and I'd love to catch up about um, what you've been working on. Uh, but again, thank you for joining us for the current session. And um I know that you're going to play some music for us. Uh, before we yep. start, uh, now, I, I see you're probably at home, but where are you living now? Yep. I'm in Memphis. I've been okay. in Memphis for about five years now, yeah. How do you like it there? How, I'm sorry? How do you like it there? I love it. It's, a, it's yeah? a great city. Very weird, vibey city, yeah. I just feel comfortable here. Yeah, it's. Uh, I would love to go to Memphis. I've never been there. I, every time I go to... Uh, to Tennessee, I end up going to Nashville, and uh, I, I, it, yeah, <laughs> and it's it's pretty crazy how that town has changed, you know, in, in the time yeah. that I've been able to visit. But uh, yeah, Memphis is on the list, so I'm looking forward to visiting that city. Uh, I think before we talk more, I would love for you to play a song before we chat. Sure. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. What do you want to play? I'm gonna play Madeline and Not. I've been slow and senseless Not struck dumb, I'm just dumb, that's all well, I can give you the constellations Lay down here and we'll count them all Madeline Give my eyes for your 
been sensual It's my back so impressive now I'm so dwarfed that I have found you Falls in me as you can see me now Slay by the words I like My world and verse was sappy music it's so sad I long to make it mine Slave to the inside like my world is burning on terminal Oh, the fire I like this flame is feeling fine It's a virtual session with The Current with Mike Doty. Mike, can you tell us a little bit about that song? Oh, wow. So this song, uh, I started writing on 9-11 because I had had, uh, the previous, not the night before, but the previous week, had bought a background check on an ex-girlfriend and uh, discovered uh, that she worked um, at one of the World Trade Center uh, buildings, not one or two, but and not seven, but in some other one. She was like a bartender for for drunk uh, uh, stockbrokers or something. It was a very weird job. It's discovered she worked there. Total stalker vibe. And so then on 9-11, I just started, uh, her name's not Madeline. It, it sounds like Madeline-ish. But uh, the first line I wrote was, call me back when the war's over. So uh, it had been a long time. Uh, I'd gotten sober like a year before that and was just kind of learning the ropes again on how to write a song. And it was really kind of the song that started pulling me out of that, that got me got me back into writing again. Mm-hmm. And it's sort of a link in on Haughty Melodic, which was the album, the first album I put out on ATO. So it is a, a meaningful song to me. And I've met... Uh, a number of people who named their kid Madeline after the song. So, or because they heard the name in the song and liked the name. That's pretty likely. I mean, that's pretty incredible when people tell you something like that or, or a fan will say, Hey, I I named my kid because I love the name after hearing it in the song. I mean, does that just kind of blow your mind to go, wow, I didn't expect it to have that kind of real impact on someone's life. There's all there's all kinds of stuff that has impact on people's lives. You know, people have had me sign their arms and then they get it tattooed on them. Um, People get lyrics tattooed on them. Um, Oh, gosh, you know, they play songs at their weddings and, you know, first dances at weddings, learn them to play memorial services. You know, you met guys during during the war that were like, blasting haughty melodic in their Humvees. You know, you have all kinds of experiences when you put your music out in the world that are just kind of mind blowing because you tend to focus on, you know, you and your precious little artistic expression. And then you discover that the resonance in the world is so much more than you thought it might be. Sure. I'm talking with Mike Doty here on The Current. Uh, so you have got a new band. want to talk about that, Ghost of Room. Um, you've been busy. You've got a book. You've got a new band. So uh, let's talk about Ghost of Room. Ghost of Room is me and can you hear my dog freaking out? I love it. What kind of dog do you, first of all, what kind of dog do you have? I'm an animal person, so I, I always like to hear about people's animals. He's a chihuahua. His name is Lunchy. And uh, he gets upset when he hears the doorbell ring. And the doorbell just rang. And I wasn't expecting anybody. So I'm choosing the current over whoever is here. <laughs> my- Poor Lunchy. We'll, we'll get to Lunchy when it's time. But yeah, um, but yeah. yeah so so Ghost of Room, what's, what's it all about? 
Ghost of Room. So me and Andrew Scrap Livingston, who is a bass player, cello player. Uh, oh God, there's ringing the fucking bell. Can you hang on? Yeah, we can. Let's just chill. Right. Yeah, seriously. I mean, this is all part of the experience, the uh, kind of the way of, of the virtual show. You know, I did this series last spring um, called Phone a Friend, and I was talking with Mavis Staples, and I was on the phone with her, which was a total trip in itself. Uh, but while we were talking on the phone, her bell rang, and I think it was her niece dropping off groceries because, you know, her family didn't want her going out to shop for groceries. They wanted to keep her safe during the pandemic. And, you know, Chicago was kind of on lock, lockdown like everywhere else. But I just remember she's like, hold on a second. Can I get my door? I'm like, go get your door. I'm pretty easy going like that. <laughs> And it's funny when I do my Monday morning check-ins with uh, Tim Nelson from Minnesota Public Radio News. Maybe you hear them uh, just after seven on Mondays. He just kind of does a news roundup from the weekend. And he's got a cat named Pepper. And I can often hear her meowing in the background. And again, it's just like the way of the world right now. Dude, <laughs> I, have to, I have to show this to you. I have to show this to you. Okay, please do. <laughs> You got her? Oh my God. I'm showing you the person I'm on a call with. That's just Hi. Oh my God. Wow. Dog's freaking out. All right. I'm Thank you so much. You're so welcome. I'm, I, I had no idea. I'm really sorry. It's okay. Wow. Yeah. All right. Have a good one. All right, that was dramatic. Um, <laughs> I feel so, like we're on a reality uh, TV show right now where we're just like getting a, a day in the life in, in Mike Doty's home. <laughs> maybe. I, I, I So I opened the door and it was my neighbor looking frantic. And I was like, dude, I'm on a thing. Can I call you back? She's like, I can't because my cat is trapped in your shed in your backyard. Oh, no. Yeah. It's like and I was animal like, I was like, drama. <laughs> yeah, come here, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. you know, and then and she runs in the backyard, and I could see the shed from here. She opens the door, and this pretty little black cat walks out. Yeah, so I'm sorry I had to keep you waiting there. But... No, that's okay. <laughs> like, I, I was just saying. It. I was just saying to the people who like we've got members um, joining in and kind of just like creeping in on our conversation right now, and uh, I was just saying that. Like, just the way of the world. Like, I can hear one of the people that I check in with on Mondays uh, from the NPR newsroom. I hear his cat meow pretty much every Monday, which she's great. Her name is Pepper. And um, and just, like, this is the way of the world. And, again, I'm, like, super easygoing. So, you know, I want to keep the animals wow. happy. But, um, yeah, before we got the little tour, we were – so you were just telling us – about Ghost of Room, and yeah. you were just telling me about uh, the bass player that you work with. Yeah, so me and Andrew Scrap Livingston have been okay. working together for 15 years. God, probably more than that, 16, 17 years. And uh, just eventually we evolved into a band. We just became a band. And so we decided to find a name for ourselves. Concurrently... I was doing all this stuff that sounded like soul coughing. And uh, as a matter of fact, I went to soul coughing and was like, I wrote this album. It's a soul coughing album. Do you want to do it? And I got back what I would describe as a hot plate of crazy. Okay. And yeah. And I was, I was like, okay, so that's not a thing. So ghost of room was actually a, a working title for a dub version of Ruby Vroom which is the first Soul Coughing album. Mm -hmm. um, we were going to do a dub version after the real version. We never got around to it. But it, so it's all, the name has always symbolized sort of a, a world of possibility that was never explored back then. And, you know, so I started writing Upright Bass Line, writing my garage band on my phone. I started working with samples and, you know, I was putting up all these kind of break beats that, that I was listening to in hip hop and was incredibly influenced by and Tribe Called Quest and De La Soul and Brand Newbie and those kind of hip hop bands. And so all these things 
and I was sort of doing the chanty, rhymy, like Tom Waits thing. And so this aesthetic was born and the partnership was a partnership. And so we put out our first album, our first EP, which is actually our second EP, because we finished an album, which is coming out later in 2021. Couldn't tell you when. Um, made it with Mario Caldato, the BC Boys producer. And that's the that's the big exciting thing is this album coming out this year. And that's great. Well, that's room. great news. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's it's, good. It's, it's, it's... Oh, I'm glad that you um, explained the name of the EP, which is Ghost of Room 2, because here yes. I am sitting like, did I miss something? Did I miss? Because <laughs> I always think that I've missed something because there's so much to keep up on. But um, that's really cool to hear that a full length will be coming out at some point this year. And, yeah. you know, we're, we're hearing that story so much from so many artists that like, you know, we're we're sitting on some material here and. You know, I, I'm excited for all the music that's going to come out this year, yeah. quite frankly. 2021 might end up being a really good year for music. What happened with Ghost of Room 2 is, so we were planning on putting it out in the fall of last year, and my managers came to me and were like, please, let's wait. Please, let's wait. And I was like, fine, we can wait. That's sensible to wait. Um, and then over the summer, um, when... Uh, the George Floyd riots were happening, the uprising was happening, when the pandemic was happening, you know, when all this weird paranoia started, you know, sifting, sifting, sifting in the culture and, you know, the violence and all the stuff. I ended up writing this EP and I went to the people I work with and was like, I got bad news. I'm putting out a record like now. Mm -hmm. And so it was like a month between me finishing that, putting it out, did it again with Mario Caldato. Everyone recorded like in their little basement or whatever their space was and sent it in, uh, scrap and me and uh, drummer, little pepper and Logan Hanna, guitar player. Um, and then we just sent it to Mario Seaman and he mixed it up, sliced and diced it and turned it into a beautiful thing. So hence, Ghost of Room 2 came out before Ghost of Room 1. I'm with Mike Doty here on The Current for a virtual session. And um, we've got members hanging out and watching this session right now. And I, I there's a Q&A function. I know that it's either here or here. Possibly here. Not so much here, but I think right here. So if you want to drop in a question, um, producer Jesse will get it to me. And, uh, and I'd love to ask... Um, some fan questions while we're hanging out. But as long as we're talking about Ghost of Vroom, uh, Mike, do you want to play something? Sure. This is actually, this is not very indicative of what Ghost of Vroom sounds like. This is the ballad on the record. But uh, this is called James Jesus Angleton. And it's about the guy who was the head of the CIA during the Vietnam War. Down in the club. Where the fires light, James Jesus sang to take shelter from the night. All oh, the papers are in order, yes, it seems. James Jesus sang to his singing dreams. I will betray you in the bars of this land on Nebraska Avenue. Won't play you for fools. Surrender, I won't go without a bite. James Jesus and Thomas singing in the night. James Jesus and the turn. James Jesus and the turn. James Jesus and the turn.
That song is called James Jesus Sangleton. Mike Doty here with The Current doing a virtual session. So this EP, Ghost of Room 2, is out now. Uh, Full length expected sometime in the new year. And we're in the new year, but sometime this year. Um, Hey, uh, you have a new book. I remember reading your book, The the Book of Drugs. And I don't remember what year that came out, but it was a bunch of years ago. And so um, the new book is called I Die Each Time I Hear the Sound. I said that out loud. Is that a reference to uh, Kathy's Clown? Yes, it is indeed. I love that song. Um, Why did you decide to to name it after that after that lyric? I I mean I I just thought that was a powerful uh, lyric, and I always heard it thought like, man, that's that's a title. That's a title for something. And it's just been I mean literally about thirty years since that impulse and finding the thing that it needed to be the title for but it's also a lot of the book is about um experiences listening to music for the first time like first time i heard the replacements first time i heard a tribe called quest um first time i heard steve reich you know a bunch of of like life-changing musical moments and how it's it's uh, essentially a rebirth and there's a um a recurring phrase in the book, which is from John Cage. Uh, he, after a piece of music, he once said, said, the world is absolutely new. So that's kind of a refrain in the book is there'll be, I'll describe some experience of listening to something and what the environment was and how old I was and what was going on in my life. And then the refrain is, and the world was absolutely new. So yeah, I die each time I hear the sound I die and then I am reborn in the moment. I'm a hippie. It, it, <laughs> so it. you mentioned the replacements. And since we're in Minnesota, since we're in the Twin Cities, yeah. and quite frankly, a f- place that you are quite familiar with, uh, you know, there was a long time, Mike, where I thought you lived in Minneapolis. <laughs> I really did. I thought you lived well, here. I made Haughty Melodic in, in Minneapolis with Dan Wilson. Mm-hmm. And I was, I was just catching... Because, you know, he's like, he's a very successful man. So I was just grabbing time whenever he had time and he was in Minneapolis. And so I would just go and I would stay in Uptown for like a month at a time, three weeks, two months, whatever it was. Took us like three years to make that record. So I really feel like I lived in Uptown between 2002 and 2005. Yeah, and uh, and Uptown having you know such a close tie to a, a band like The Replacements. So I mean, you mentioned it. I mean, do you want to talk a little bit about maybe a story of the first time that you heard The Replacements or or a song that you really tie a, a memory to? Well, I mean, I so I used to go by whatever was in the punk bin, punk bin at um, Uncle Phil's Records and Tapes in Highland Falls, New York. Mm-hmm. And uh, there were, you know, like the Violent Femmes were in there and the replacements were in there. And I was uh, probably the only guy buying them. So mm-hmm. I would go and like whatever was left from the last time, I'd be like, uh, who are the hoodoo gurus? All right, I'll buy that. You know, n- and I had no source of anything to read. You know, I, it was just completely like blind, whatever was in the punk bin. And so I bought Let It Be. And it was this golden autumn day and, you know, it was a long walk from my house to this record store in this town. And, you know, I had to like go through my town and go to another town, you know, teenager, 15 year old, whatever, walking all that way. And uh, it, you know, from I will dare to answering machine and just how answer, I mean, answering machine is like the template, like so much of, of, my aesthetic in a very general sense comes from answering machine, including the sampling, you know, this, the, the bell telephone voice, 
Um, you know, mm -hmm. there, there's all kinds of stuff that comes from that record. And so that chapter is about that experience and the fact that, like, no, that's a unique experience. And yet, when I hear the album, um, I don't think anybody hears a fall day in Highland Falls, New York, going to get going to Uncle Phil's records and tapes. So this very deep experience, this deep, meaningful experience that is that is evoked every time I hear that is is entirely unique to me as a listener, as everyone's experience listening to something for the first time is this sure. entirely you know, incredibly evocative experience. Yeah, because you've got your Let It Be experience. Well, you know, <laughs> hundreds of thousands of other people have their own Let It Be experience, yeah. which, um, yeah. you know, even though they're reading your book and getting your experiences, I, I like how that can kind of like light up our own experiences. We relate to another music fan. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, the, the latest one in there is as I was finishing the book, I heard, uh, uh, can I curse? I've already cursed. Let's do it. No, what don't the hell? Care. All right. A song called uh, I Can Fucking Tell by an artist named St. John. Um, and I heard that driving back from like some gig. And uh, it was just like, wow, you know, and, and it just such a chill. I'm getting chills thinking about the song, um, you know, and the world is absolutely new. And so as life goes on, just these moments of human genius, um, they're never going to stop coming. And you just got to find them. You just got to be open to hearing them wherever they are. Mm -hmm. Well, the book is called I Die Each Time I Hear the Sound. So you can read about, um, you know, Mike Doty is reflecting on, on music and, and tying it to certain, you know, experiences, which I think we all kind of do as music fans. Uh, it's yeah. a virtual session from The Current. Appreciate everybody joining today. And um, I think we're going to get another song. Uh, for yeah, sure, yeah, before yeah. we end this session. Mm -hmm. uh, I do want to say just thanks to uh, the members of Minnesota Public Radio again. Um, you know, I do have a question for you, uh, Mike. I was thinking the same thing, so I'm glad that uh, one of our listeners, in fact, Lance, I love Mike's guitar. Oh. Um, is there a story behind this unique guitar? It looks like it has a story. It looks like it's had quite a few experiences <laughs> well I, yeah it's had quite a few experiences in yeah. my hands that's for sure um it's some luthier in wales named benjamin Riria, benjamin maddock and uh it's my brexit guitar because i was on tour in england one summer and uh went to this to hobgoblin music in bristol um which is like a famous like folk instrument store and i saw this guitar and was like i this needs to live in my house and it was too expensive. And I was like, I can't, I, you know, I can't just buy another guitar, especially on tour. So I went home and was sad about it. And then I came back the next summer after Brexit and it cost the same amount in pounds, mm -hmm. but now it was much cheaper in dollars. So it, it was the Brexit guitar, like, like that terrible thing that happened to the British economy, sadly was a positive uh, a benefit to you, from, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, one more remember, question. Oh, go ahead. No, no, no. Go ahead. Finish, please. I seriously told the cashier about it. She was like, haven't we seen you before? I'm like, yeah, I was here last year, but this is more expensive. But now it's only blah, blah, blah. And it really bummed her out. And I was like, oh, God, I'm really sorry. Like, I should not have shared that uh, that joy. I should have kept that to myself. Yeah, I, or like maybe the first time you went, you didn't have the beard yet. And like the second time, maybe you could have just been like, no, right. oh, you've never seen me. Yeah. <laughs> I'll go back, I'll shave if I ever go back and they'll, they'll be like, oh, who is this new American person? That you <laughs> As you're bringing your money to buy more. Um, yeah. Yeah. You know, when you talk about, you know, having more guitars in the house, uh, doing these virtual sessions and it's just like kind of this world of Zoom where I've been talking with artists from their living room and, I never would have had a glimpse into like, well, Dan Wilson's living room or Margot Price's living room if we weren't like in this situation we are now. Um, I was curious too, and so was a member named Christy uh, about that poster that's on the wall behind your guitar. Oh, yeah, this, that one uh, right there. Well, I collect um, Indian film posters, Bollywood film posters, vintage ones. Um, they're very easy to find on eBay. 
and their beautiful, beautiful graphic design. Um, I'm a Bollywood fan, especially um, Lata Mangeshkar's singing. And um, there's an actor named Shami Kapoor that I love a lot, comedian, you know, all the 60s, 70s Bollywood stuff. So, yeah, I mean, I, I'll not give you a, another tour, but, like, there's one over there, and there's one there, and there's one there, and, like, everywhere in my house are these posters that I find and frame up. Excellent. Yeah, thank you for answering yeah. those questions. Um, I just want to say thanks to a couple people uh, on the technical side today, Peter Eklund and Tom Campbell, Jesse Wise of producing. Uh, thanks again to all the members of Minnesota Public Radio for making these virtual sessions happen. We really appreciate your support. Uh, thank you so much again to you, Mike Doty, and uh, and thanks to Lunchy for making an appearance today. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> and thanks to, the, to my neighbor who got her cat. Right. And I'm a cat person. So I, for a second there, I was like, wait, wait, wait we're, we need to stop right now if there's a cat trap. Yeah. And we can pick this up later, everyone. But I uh, know. That, not a good ending. Didn't even have to call the fire department. So that was good. Did you uh, tell what was going on what was happening? Or were you just like, what is this happening with this neighbor? I, mean, I was like, well, I don't Who knows? Uh, go get your door. And while you were gone, <laughs> I was just telling um, a story to uh, the members that last spring, you know, when the, the pandemic had, when the S had really hit the fan, it was like, I, I uh, was doing this series where I was calling up musicians and calling up singers. I, I called up Mavis Staples in Chicago and we were in the middle of a conversation. She goes, hold on, I got to get my door, you know, and it was her niece bringing her groceries. And it was, it's just great. Like just these little moments that I guess like to me, it made Mavis Staples feel like so normal that she had taken time out right. from cleaning out the closets and then she was expecting right. her niece. So I don't know. It's just right. kind of this cool thing that's it's awful, but you know, it's kind of brought us all together in this in this way that yeah. we probably wouldn't have before. Um well Mike, thanks for doing this today. And if we could get one more song from you, we would be very appreciative. What do you want to do? All right. I I haven't played this in months. So I may mess it up and then stop and play something else, but I'll Great. try. This is a ghost room song called Rona Polona. Don't touch the box, don't touch the shelf. Don't touch the people, don't touch yourself. Lysol, sprayed on the wheel, no hugging, no kissing, hand holding, no fear. Savoir Faire, Pikachu, Pillowcase, Mask, Look and Debonair, Conversating in an Amazon bar, Warner Burger drive through dressing like an astronaut. We do the Rona Polona. We do the Rona Polona. You won't know it if you're doing it right. You never know it if you're doing it right. You won't know it if you're doing it right. If you're doing it right. Fuck that girl, fuck my nutrient. If I was a kid, I'd find me a sword of loot. Shut up, at least you learn to use the phone. The sword of earth, the loot of home alone is what you live. Don't watch the vain man, you can't forgive. Jesus worked for the common good. I got the mask on, laying in the cut. Have the dog like an extra, and eyes wide shut. Tiny Cardi B on the ledge with the box of wipes next to me. If I jump, they'll scoop me up. Throw me in a sanitized Super Bowl cup. Come correct with a stimulus check and buy a yellow esteem. I'm unsure when, but I'll bet before they close down France again. We do the Rona Polona.
do the Rona Polona. <laughs> That's a great song. I'm going to have that in my head for the rest of the day. Uh, Mike Thank Doty. You. Mike Doty, wrapping up a session here with the current virtual sessions made possible. Again, in-studio performances. When we get back there someday, these virtual sessions, that's where we hear, uh, that's where we are today in this moment, uh, made possible by members. So I'm glad that you guys could all kind of creep in and watch how one of these things is uh, is recorded. You never know what's going to happen, but we appreciate you being there. And uh, Mike Doty, appreciate you being there. Thank you for checking in. Thank you very much. I just wanted to say that the Current is legitimately one of the best stations in America, and I've been to them all. I I literally have been to them all. It's a great station. You guys are doing great work, and I just hope you keep going. And members, supporters, keep supporting The Current, please, for the sake of us musicians as, as well as the sake of your own local culture. Oh, thank you so much for saying that. Um, you know what? I, uh, I always like to see... A band's face when they come into the uh, the big studio at Minnesota Public Radio, like probably a little nervous, like, well, if we're going to go do press, who knows what we're going to encounter. Yeah. And then walking yeah. into that studio and seeing that Neve board. And I just it's like I see shoulders just start yeah. to relax. Like, yeah. <laughs> so we always try because, to give you guys a good experience when you come here. Because all the musicians that you meet have had less good experiences in radio. Yeah, I understand. <laughs> yeah, and uh, and what's wild, a few of us are coming up on 16 years being at the station. Wow. I can't believe it's been around this long, but it's been it's been a really cool ride. And, um, and yeah, to be able to support all the all the musicians and bands who don't get the well deserved support from other places in the radio landscape, I guess so. Anyway, uh, you have a good day. You have a good day. Enjoy Memphis, and uh, we'll see you soon, okay? Thank you so much. Okay. I'll save more cats. All right, bye-bye. <laughs> see ya.